All right, in this video, I just want to give kind of a basic idea of Euler's method and how to use it. Um, I'm not going to do any complete computational problems in this one. This Again, just sort of an idea of what's going on with the Euler's method. So if you want to see kind of a concrete example, um, this is not the video for you. So the basic idea is, though, with Euler's method, what we're trying to do is we've got some uh, differential equation, and we're trying to um, basically estimate some value um, on our solution curve. And again, we've got some differential equation and some initial condition. So suppose we want to estimate the value y of 4. And we're going to talk about with the step size of 1 here, just to make it a little easy, where y of x is the solution to this initial value problem, y prime minus y equals 0, and y of 0 equals 1. So this is definitely a differential equation that it's not that hard to find the solution directly. Um, but again, just to uh, kind of keep things easy here, um, this is what we're going to use. So our solution curve y, suppose we don't know exactly uh, what function y satisfies this differential equation. Well, what you can do is you can make a direction field or a slope field. And suppose we make a slope field and we end up concluding um, that our graph, based on that slope field or our direction field, the solution curve should look something like this curve in red. Well, to, uh, to get the value y of 4, basically we would need to know the equation, uh, whatever our function is, y. We would plug 4 into that, and that would be the true value. That's, that's the number we're looking for um, in this case. So we can't get that exactly, um, or in some cases you can't get that exactly. So uh, the, the basic idea is, notice we can take this y prime minus y equals 0. I could actually rewrite that simply as y prime equals y. And again, this is what I would use to make my slope field or my direction field um, based on this based on this equation. But notice, for example, um, if we're sitting here, since we're, we're going to use this initial condition y of 0 equals 1, so that's where I have it going through. According to this, it says that the slope of the tangent line at this point 0, 1, well, since it's just simply equal to the y-coordinate, it says what we would do is um, our slope in this case um, at this point, the slope of our tangent line, if we were to think about a direction field, this line, and it you know uh, doesn't really look like it here, um, what should happen is this line should have slope of um, 1. Okay, so what we do is I can use that to now find um, kind of a new y-coordinate. And it's not the correct y-coordinate on the original graph, but it's pretty close to it. And here I'm using step size 1. So basically every time you, you move over one unit, you're going to basically figure out that new y-value. And since we started at 0, 1, um, I think we could conclude without too much trouble that this new point would be 1, 2. Because again, our slope of our line in this case is 1. So if we go over 1 and up 1, we would be at the y-coordinate of 2. And what we do is now, again, I just think, well, what would the slope of the tangent line, um, based on our, our slope field, what would the slope of that line look like at this new point? Well, again, this says the slope of the tangent line is basically whatever the y-coordinate is. Well, now the y-coordinate is simply uh, has the value 2. So my new tangent line would have a slope of m equals, well, 2. OK, so now I would be sitting here at this point. This would be the new point, uh, I guess, 2 comma 4, because we went up 2 units from our original y value of 2. And then we have to do the same thing yet again. OK. Um, now it says the slope of the tangent line at uh, this new point 2, 4. It says it would simply have slope of uh, m equals 4. I could get my new, line, my new y coordinate again. I would know that value. And then I could simply do this one more time. Um, I could now uh, use this new point. I could find, I guess this new point, let's fill it in. This would be 3, comma. Um, let's see, since our original y coordinate was at 4, we said the slope of this tangent line is also 4. Well, now I would be at the point 3, comma, 8. One last time, um, I would basically change direction on my approximating curve, my blue curve. 
Again, according to this formula, it says the slope of the new tangent line is just the old y-coordinate. So now our new, our new line um, would have a slope of m equals 8. And now we would be sitting at the y-coordinate. Um, we'd be at the x-coordinate of 4. The original y-coordinate we were at was 3, 8. Well, if we go over one unit and up eight units, I'm now going to be at the y-coordinate of 16. So actually, I take it back. We, I said I wasn't going to do a concrete problem, but really what we've, we've, we've done it now. Um, basically, we've shown that y of 4 is going to be roughly equal to, in this case, the number 16. Okay, so a little small here. The basic idea, again, you're gonna, all you're really doing is just using equations of tangent lines, okay? So you're trying to uh, find a curve uh, that's gonna sort of hug or approximate the solution curve, okay? And the idea is you move over so many units and basically you just use your slope or direction field to sort of update the direction of that line. So notice every time at every point I kind of stop and I update it with the new, uh, the new slope and that kind of changes the direction and hopefully it should keep you sort of close to the curve and then you know I could figure out that new y coordinate and again I change the direction on my tangent line uh, that gives me a new y coordinate again I can, can go back and just use the direction field to sort of uh, change the direction on that tangent line again and if we repeat this process eventually we're going to get um, an approximation Okay. So this is the idea. We're trying to create uh, a curve that, again, approximates the solution curve. And to kind of keep it going the right direction, um, that's what our step size is going to do. It's basically going to say sort of, in this case, every time you move over uh, one unit, we're going to sort of modify the direction on our tangent line to make sure that it's staying close to the solution curve. Intuitively, the smaller this h value, the more often you're going to sort of change direction and in general, you know, the smaller your step size, the much better your final approximation will be, okay? Because you're sort of updating the direction more often uh, to keep it more accurate. Okay, so uh, without going all the way through it, again, I've kind of got a little picture here. The idea is, okay, so again, suppose we're at some generic x-coordinate, x naught, and we're up at a height here of some y-coordinate, y naught, okay? So our point here, um, this, this original point is x naught y naught. Again, our curve here in the red is going to be our solution curve. You can justify that if you move over h units, that's your step size, that basically um, the, the, the change in y, so if you're originally at this value y naught, and we go to this new uh, uh, y coordinate y sub 1, you can show that if you've moved over h units, you can easily easily calculate this kind of new height that you're getting, uh, this new this new value that you're adding on. And the idea is basically uh, we can just say if so if we're at some generic point x sub n y sub n, the the slope of this tangent line is simply going to be given by y prime equals whatever you got. Um, in our last case, we simply had you know, we would have had y prime equals y. This would be our function of x and y, basically. Okay, so it says use whatever your, your, your direction field formula is. And it says basically just evaluate the slope of the tangent line at that point, multiply it by h, and that's going to give you the additional, um, basically the change in y that you're going to have. So, what you can really kind of show is using this, um, and again, you, you know, a little, you know, not too much justification here, but basically, to get your y1 value, it would be the original y sub 0 plus, well, we take our step size h, and we basically multiply it by the slope of the tangent line at this previous point. Again, that's all this f of x sub 0, y sub 0 represents. It's just the slope of the tangent line. Well, likewise, to get our y sub 2, kind of the next point, if we went over, so x sub 2, uh, y sub 2, well, now we would take our y sub 1 value, and again, we would just take our step size, but now we would multiply it 
by uh, our f of x sub 1, y sub 1, which again is just the slope of the tangent line um, at this new point. Generically, you can do this um, in general and kind of show that the, uh, the nth y value is going to be the previous y value, y sub n plus 1, plus h times f of x sub n minus 1, y sub n minus 1. And that's going to approximate, again, kind of your nth y value um, on your solution curve. Okay, so again, a little tricky, um, you know, a little geometry. There's definitely some stuff to think about in this case, in this, you know, in this, in this procedure. But again, at the end of the day, all you're really doing is you're just, to approximate some y value, you're just basically finding equations of tangent lines, okay? So you move over so much based on the slope of the tangent line. Again, you kind of update that, that, uh, that curve by kind of finding a new, uh, using your direction field to find a new slope of a tangent line, following that over so much. And again, you, you're constantly kind of refining the direction of your approximating curve using the direction field. So, all right, I'm going to do at least one concrete example. And basically, it just comes down to kind of repeatedly using this formula here at the bottom. Um, but again, I wanted to give a little justification as to where this comes from. You know, it's worth thinking about, then you're not just memorizing it. Um, but again, it's not uh, very difficult to use Euler's method. This stuff is perfect for a computer. You know, especially because you can you can decrease your step size h. Make you can make it really really small. You know, a computer can grind through these computations. You know, it can do tons of these computations. And even if your step size is super 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 small, um, which should give you a very good approximation, you know, a computer can grind through that. You'll see in our example the numbers get a little obnoxious. Um, but again, nothing too terrible. Uh, nothing really much worse than just tedious arithmetic. So. Stick around and take a look for that example if you are interested.